Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna talk about all the graphs, charts, and guides I have. You already know about two of those, uh, the GBR chart and the World Boss chart, which are always linked in the description of each video I make. I have a couple of more, but the thing is, to reach those charts and graphs, you need to know the specific link for the respective graph, because they're actually hidden. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make all of them public. So from now on, what you need to do to find any chart made by me is just go to my Imager profile page. The link to my Imager profile page will be in the description of every video from now on. So it's gonna be easy to find. What you guys will find there is the beginner's first 28 days guide. I know you guys probably won't need that, but if you have a friend or you know somebody that just started playing, I believe that would be very helpful for them. There's also a video about that guide in my channel if you're interested. I update this guide every time a change is required, so it's not necessarily every update, because if there won't be any changes, obviously it won't get updated. Then there's the world boss chart that you guys already know about. I'm thinking of making some changes on that one. I'm thinking of separating it into different charts for each boss. Because right now it looks okay, but in a couple of months when I test some more characters, it will just get too convoluted. Also, that way I will be able to include exactly which team I use for the specific run that is shown. Let me know what you guys think about that and if I should go ahead with it. Then, of course, we have the GBR chart. You guys already know about it, but let me know if you want any other additional information added. Now we're gonna talk about some not new, I've been making those for probably a year now or close to it, but probably most of you didn't know about those. Let's start with this one. This includes a couple of different things in one table. It's the native tier two cost, awakening cost, and uniform upgrade cost. Native tier 2 cost. The first part will show you the cost of upgrading a native tier 2 character from 1 star to 6 stars, 6 mastery, level 60. The characters are divided to 3 categories, regular cost, mixed and double cost. Quicksilver and Cable are mixed because they are regular cost up until level 60, but from 60 to 70 they become double cost. Talking about 60 to 70, at the right side you can see how many biometrics do you need to upgrade each character from level 60 to 70. The cost from level 60 to 70 in terms of gold, bam or tier 3 mats is not shown because it is actually random. Keep in mind, this chart does not include resources needed for gear and skill upgrade. Then the next part is about the epic quests and epic quest characters. The ones that you unlock after completing the respective epic quest. Essentially this shows you all the materials you will need to complete the respective epic quest and unlock the respective character. Keep in mind that you will also need to have certain characters at up to 5 stars to complete those EQs. Those are not shown here. Next is the required biometrics breakdown for regular and double cost characters. After that comes the resources needed to enhance potential with 100% success rate. I don't think this is the way you should do things. I used to do it the 100% method, but then this last update I had a huge problem with BAM and CNS. So in the long run, probably the 10% method is better, though I cannot say for sure. Keep in mind that you need to double all those numbers for double cost native TSUs. Next, we have a tier 3 advancement cost. There are three categories, double cost, 1.5 cost, and regular cost. After that comes awakening unlock and rank up cost. All the materials you need to unlock and rank up the awakening skill for each level. For better A build, you need to multiply all of that by 1.5. Next is the uniform upgrade cost. Now this one is a bit too complex, I'm not really a fan of it. I'll see how I can make it a bit easier to understand. The cost is color coded based on the cost of the uniform. And then the graph is divided in two parts essentially. 
Left side is for regular characters, which require bios, non-stones or m crown shards and uniform upgrade kits to upgrade. And the right side is for native tier twos, which require non-stones of chaos, m crown crystals and bam or phoenix feathers. Also below you can see what are the uniform options for each rank, advancement. All right, let's move to the next chart. This one is about world boss strikers. Pretty much shows you all the old defense and resist down strikers, all the CC strikers, ignore dodge strikers, some other useful strikers like anti-venom and ancient one. And lastly, strikers that don't necessarily do anything special, but are either high damage dealers themselves or have the 12% increased damage against villains and heroes effect which is pretty nice. Now this will change obviously based on how well built your specific character is, so you have to take that into consideration. Let me just talk a bit about the old defense strikers and CC strikers. If the character you're using already has all defense down or resist down that ignores immunity, do not use all defense down or resist down striker respectively. If you do, what's gonna happen is you will nullify the old defense down the character you're using has. The old defense down will last just for a second after a certain period of time. This is due to the relatively new resist mechanic. Based on the resist you have, it may happen in 20 seconds or a minute, but it will happen. So you don't really wanna do that. If the character you're using, your main character, doesn't have any old defense down, can use all defense down strikers. Now the same thing will still happen. The ADD will last only for a second after a certain period of time, but you don't really care about that because it will not affect your main character's DPS in a sense. So you're not losing anything. In terms of which ADD strikers to use, clearly Nimrod and Negasonic Teenage Warhead are by far the best. But if you don't have them, just start from the top and use the first one you have. Use only one all defense down striker because not only the ADD will apply just for a second after a certain period of time, but also the boss gets immunity to ADD for a certain period of time every time it is applied. So using more than one ADD striker is pointless. In terms of CC strikers, it is the same with the resist mechanic. You can see that some characters apply 5 seconds of CC, some apply 3 seconds. Doesn't really matter because after a certain period of time, all of that will be reduced to 1 second either way. Different types of CC are differentiated. For example, if you are playing with, say, Magneto, who has paralysis on his third skill, don't use Jean Grey or Zemo as a striker, since when they strike, the skills they use have paralysis too. If you do use them as strikers, what's gonna happen is due to the resist mechanic, Magneto's paralysis will get reduced to one second too after a certain period of time, and you don't want that to happen. Using a CC striker with a different type of CC is fine, like Rachel or Apocalypse, they have mind control, and Magneto has paralysis. That is totally fine. Now, here's an interesting situation. Don't use Scarlet Witch as a striker with Magneto. Even though Scarlet has mind control, which will not interfere with Magneto's paralysis, Scarlet also has all defense down on her striking skill, which will in turn reduce Magneto's all defense down to one second, which obviously you don't want to happen. And this is just one example. You have to check those interactions individually for every character. So essentially, Rule of thumb, does the character you're using have all defense down that ignores immunity? If the answer is yes, don't use any all defense down strikers. Does the character you're using have some kind of CC that ignores immunity? If the answer is yes, don't use a same type of CC striker. All right, let's move to the next graph, useful leaderships and passives. Pretty self-explanatory. You can find here in the first part all the all attack, energy attack, physical attack leaderships, all the elemental damage increase leaderships, all the debuff removal leaderships, great for PvP, all the ignore dodge leaderships, and all the debuff duration increase leaderships. 
The second part is about all the passives that apply to all allies or specific type of characters besides the character itself. Whenever you see the letter U, that means the effect comes with the uniform. Sometimes you will see two numbers, like say, in instance with Beast in the physical attack increase leadership section. That means the first number, in this instance, 45% is the base value without uniform. Then you see the 50% and U in brackets. That means his leadership gets upgraded to 50% with his newest uniform. But also, you can see that he gets an additional effect, critical damage increased by 10% with the uniform. All those graphs get updated with every patch. Let's move to the next one, useful graphs and charts. So this is a bunch of random stuff that is bundled together in an album. First, we have the gold table. This is very useful, actually. This shows you which missions give you the most gold. This is useful when you have extra boost points over 100. If you want to farm the most gold, you want to start from the top because the gold you get from those missions will be even more due to the stage 2 boost. It's gonna get multiplied. Next, we have the required characters for World Boss Ultimate. Those are the characters that you are required to clear a certain stage of the respective boss five times to be able to get past that stage. Next, we have a table that shows the places you can get certain premium items. This one is not updated actually. We had a new legendary battle since I last updated that. And you can get a CDP of insight from the new legendary battle from the Black Widow one. Next one is some uh, mumbo jumbo about the cost efficiency stuff. I don't know how helpful that will be. This one is also not updated. I think I made that like somewhere around six months ago. So beware, it may be outdated. Now, lastly, there are two more albums you will be able to see that I want to talk about. Those are World Boss Clear Screenshots and GBR Clear Screenshots. Those two are kind of connected to the World Boss Chart and GBR Chart in a sense. Most of the things you see on World Boss Chart and GBR Chart are documented on my channel as videos, but there are some runs, some clears that I have no video of. So those two albums are for that. You can see the missing clears as screenshots on those albums. All the videos on my channel plus those two albums will cover will be the proof for 99% of the clear times that you see on the World Boss chart and the GBR chart. All right, guys, I think I covered everything. Let me just say something about the next giveaway. What do you guys think about this? How about if I give those coupons away during a premiere? I don't have that much experience with YouTube premiere, but as far as I know, this is how it works. If you follow my channel and if you turn the bell on, you'll get a notification 30 minutes before the video premieres. So you don't miss it. This is gonna happen somewhere around three hours, maybe four hours after the daily reset on Saturday. When the video goes live, there's gonna be a live chat where I'm gonna randomly drop the coupons. I think that's gonna be a nice experience. You guys can ask me questions about the run or about anything to be honest in the meantime on the live chat. And if you guys like it, maybe we do premieres every Saturday from now on. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. All right, now back to the graphs and charts. Let me know if there is any way I can improve those charts. If you wanna see anything specific to be added also, let me know if I'm missing anything in the World Boss Strikers and Leaderships plus Passives table. I hope those will be helpful to you in some way. Share them, let your friends, the people you interact with know about them. As I said in the beginning, all you need to do is go to my Imager profile page, the link to which will be always included in the description of every video. Alright guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.